My name is Bailey, and that's my boyfriend, Carlo. We've been dating for almost eight years. We may look like a fairy tale couple, <laughs> and that's because we are one. We have to fly across the world to see each other, but we manage it three times a year. Despite being 5,000 miles apart, we've grown up together. And when it's good, it is great. But when it's bad, it's really bad. Let's start at the beginning, and I'll tell you how I met my Italian boyfriend. Brighton is the kind of small town that you'd pass through on your way to a real city. If you stop there, it might be to grab some lunch, but probably just to get gas. If you do, you might want to avoid the locals. And if you're lucky, you could see some cows on your way out. Other than that, there's not a whole lot going on. I was five years old when my family moved to Brighton. It was a great place to grow up, but once I got older, I realized just how little the city had to offer me. That is, until my senior year of high school. I went to a school called Brighton High School. It was small and it didn't have a whole lot of funding, but for the most part, I had a good time. The teachers were great, I had a few good friends, and I loved drama and choir. And that's where I spent most of my days. A few months into my senior year, I saw a boy that I had never seen before in the hallway. I knew right away that he was the foreign exchange student. His eyebrows were larger than life, and he had shorts that went above the knee, which is a big deal in the USA, especially in 2012. Basically, I had never seen anyone so beautiful in my whole life. A few weeks passed before I finally met him. It was just an ordinary day in the drama hall, and then all of a sudden, he was there. And I'm not a shy girl, so I marched over to introduce myself and say hello right away. The first time we met, it was in the drama hall, and you came out from the backstage, and you were wearing a white sweater. You were like, hi there. And I remember having already a big crush on you as soon as you <laughs> said hi to me. I wanted to be his friend so badly. Never in one million years did I ever imagine him to be a potential boyfriend. I wasn't beautiful, I wasn't popular, and I wasn't smart or talented. You were one of the prettiest girls I had ever seen. My first impression of you was just wow. A week after we first met, I found out from a mutual friend that he had a crush on me. I remember feeling so stunned. I hadn't thought it was a possibility, not in the slightest. The first time we ever got to spend time together, we were painting the set in the auditorium after school. We painted together, and then we started playing with paint, and you painted all over me. I was mortified that I had stained his clothes, but he just laughed and said it was okay. I just remember how fun it was to be with you. I remember that I couldn't stop smiling after that. I went home and I googled if foreign exchange students were allowed to date. I even dreamed about him. I had never felt so strongly about anyone ever. A day or two later, we were finally alone again when he told me, I don't know how to say this. He looked so nervous and I asked him, are you asking me out? Like boyfriend and girlfriend? He said yes and I couldn't believe my ears. And of course I agreed. We started dating and thus began the best part of my life. After about four or five months of dating, I realized that what I was feeling towards Carlo was love. I even started writing poetry about him. It was raining outside, but we were safe and warm in my car. I had never loved anyone before, so it was pretty scary to tell him how I felt. I knew I had to do it though. I remember basically realizing right away, it was like, it's the same for me. And then I said it to you two days later because I'm an idiot. Even though I was having an amazing time, I could feel the day he would leave coming closer and closer. I didn't want to say goodbye. Towards the end, we had a conversation about breaking up. And we realized that neither of us wanted to. On the morning he left, we took the plunge into an international long-distance relationship. We were both only 17. 
My first trip to Italy was the summer I graduated, and from the moment my plane touched down, I was stunned. I had never seen such an amazing place. It sounds cheesy, but I didn't know such beauty could exist in the world. We saw Venice, Rome, and countless other beautiful places. I felt like I was in a movie. I couldn't believe my luck. I stayed for one month, and I think we both fully realized that we were meant to be together. We both knew we were in it for the long haul, and after 30 days, we had to say goodbye once more. Then, the back and forth started. Between film school, work, and other obligations, I managed to see Carlo three times a year. Sometimes he would come to the USA, but most of the time I went to Italy. With every trip, I fell deeper in love with his country and deeper in love with him. But with every separation, more problems and more fights would arise with the distance. Sometimes our months apart would be fine, but sometimes it would be ugly. Not only were we trying to navigate a 5,000 mile gap between us, but we were also trying to navigate university with new friends, new opportunities, and new perspectives. We were growing into young adults. College was a rough time. There were a few dark points where we thought we wouldn't make it, but every single time we pushed through, we managed to solve our problems and stay together. And in the middle of it all, we started a tiny YouTube channel to share stories of our relationship. As the years went by and we matured, the distance became easier and easier to manage. Our communication skills grew, and eventually we knew exactly what the other needed relationship-wise. The months apart began to fly by without incident or even one fight. Two years ago, I started my career with a video production job as he began his final years of medical school. I am so proud to say that eight years later, we're still going strong. To this day, I pinch myself to remind myself that I'm not dreaming. 2019 was smooth sailing, and our future together was so close that I could taste it. That is, until February arrived. New restrictions have come into force in France. No one can now leave home with... The Italian government announced that the entire country is locked down. Raised its official risk level from medium to high as the... A nationwide shutdown is Italy's most dramatic step yet. Italy remains the worst hit country with another big surge in cases today. The spread of a virus that shows no sign of slowing down. Let's look at the number of people who are... The number of deaths. Infected. Infected. It's comparable to the end of the Second World War. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see how uh, heavy numbers of guys that today in the When I saw that COVID had reached Italy, I knew it would be trouble. It felt like my worst nightmare had come true. The borders were closed, people were sick, and a virus was spreading. I didn't know when I'd see him again. I fell into depression. Nothing made me happy. Thankfully, we've adjusted in the last eight months. I'm glad we can um, sign the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> I am so thankful that if a global pandemic were to happen, that it happened at this point in our relationship. If it had happened in 2014 or 2015, we wouldn't have survived. And that's the saddest part for me. There are little Carlos and Baileys all over the world who had to cancel their first or second trips abroad to be with their boyfriend or girlfriend. How many future marriages have disappeared because of this? How many potential love stories have gotten cut short because of rigid border policy? We shouldn't have to be married to visit one another. And some countries have realized that. Like the Netherlands, which has opened borders for international unmarried couples. With proper testing and quarantine, why not give couples a chance? Carlo is my soulmate. We're too young to get married, but we're fully committed. Now that you know our whole story, I hope you can agree that we're so much more than a fling or puppy love. I'm here to tell the world that our love is not tourism. I wasn't initially going to shoot an outro for this video due to the fact that it kind of speaks for itself. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end, but I scripted it months ago and I started shooting it months ago, as you can tell by my pink hair in the video. I don't look like that anymore because like literally six months has passed and that means things have changed. 
So the pre Italian Prime Minister a few days ago said that he would consider allowing binational couples into Italy and he would make a decision on September 7th. It's not September 7th yet. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I didn't wanna change the script and fuck up my narrative. So I'm gonna post it the way it is, you know? I also wanted to apologize about how emo this was. The reason why it's so sad and mushy and gushy is because I wrote it in a really dark time when I was depressed, when I was sad, when I was missing him. In retrospect, now that I'm in a better place, I've seen Carlo since then. Watching it now, I'm like, ooh. But, you know, it was true to how I was feeling back then. So I wanted to do it justice with my original vision. I am aware at how cheesy it was. I'm aware at how silly and like heartbroken and like, I know, I know. It's cringy and it's whatever, but it's how I was feeling. It's how I felt in high school. And you know what? We're just gonna let it go. We're gonna let it go. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that you subscribe if you haven't been subscribed to me yet. And you can follow us on Instagram. Follow Love Is Not Tourism Italy. I'll pop their Instagram in the description down below and you can follow them for updates as well. Thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.